Dr. Donald Wood, the chief curator of the museum, will now take us on a highlighted tour of the extensive Asian art collection. The Asian art collection at the Birmingham Museum of Art is the largest and most comprehensive of its kind in the, in the southeastern United States. We have art from India, Central Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, the Philippines, uh, China, Korea, and Japan as well. So you can come here and see great masterpieces from all over Asia. We have seven galleries for Asian art. There are two for China, two for Japan, one for Korea, one for Southeast Asian and Indian sculpture, and one for Southeast Asian ceramics as well. There's always been Asian art at the museum ever since we opened our doors in 1951. Um, in fact, among the first 10 objects ever given to the museum was Asian art, a little pair of Chinese shoes for a lady. Um, we did not start out with one large collection, one large gift, say from a Rockefeller family or anybody. We have literally put this together piece by piece over the past 20 some odd years. The Birmingham Asian Art Society began in 1975 and they have been key to the growth of our collection. And they were a very smart group of people. This is a group of doctors and lawyers and their families here in Birmingham who decided they wanted an Asian collection at our museum. And so they started buying and donating to the museum. And they divided the collection up. They said, okay, you'll collect Korean art, you'll collect Chinese art, you'll collect Japanese art, and why don't you do Southeast Asian ceramics? And so we ended up with a really good, solid collection from all over Asia. And this group is still very active today. They've donated recently a beautiful pair of Japanese screens that are on display right now. So we have a large support group here with many, many different people participating and helping us. And we're now not only getting local support, but statewide from all over the region, all over the United States, Europe, and Asia as well. We've had a few wonderful additions to the collection from Asian collections recently. So it's an exciting time to be at the museum. And you can come and see the oldest piece that's in our museum, a 3000 BC Japanese pot, on up through contemporary Asian ceramics and contemporary Chinese and Japanese prints and paintings as well. So there's always something for everybody to see here. We're in our first Japanese gallery right now, and the thing that will catch your eye instantly are the suits of Japanese armor, the samurai armor that's on display. Some of these date back to the 15th, 16th century. We have a beautiful formal set of armor that probably was never worn into battle, but was for ceremonial, official occasions. And then there's another set, a dark blue set, that was worn into battle. There are a number of Japanese swords on display, beautiful helmets, and an interesting collection of guns as well. Guns were introduced to the Japanese by the Portuguese in the 15th and 16th centuries. And they mastered gun technology very, very quickly and produced very beautiful flintlocks. And we have several of these on display, as well as a handheld cannon. Now in our second Japanese gallery is a beautiful set of Japanese screens that show Chinese scholars at play. Japanese painting and Japanese art in general was greatly influenced by Chinese art. And so you will see many cross influences between the two countries. And so Chinese scholars at play is not an unusual theme for the Japanese. These screens were painted by an artist named Kano Eicho. He died in the late 19th century. We're not exactly sure of his dates, but we know he worked for one of the great lords, one of the great daimyos in southern Japan. And he had a very characteristic brush style with a very jagged, rough edge to it. And so we are very pleased to have added these to our collection this past year. Now in the main Chinese gallery, you'll see an amazing 15th century Chinese Buddhist temple mural. These are two panels from a much, much larger composition that was damaged at some point, probably early in this century. These panels were bought by a Japanese dealer in the 1920s or so and were stored in Japan until the 1980s when the museum was able to acquire them. Each panel weighs a thousand pounds. They're in new construction in our recent addition to the museum. This room was designed and built to hold these very, very heavy panels. And they show the western paradise of Amitabha Buddha. This is the Buddhist paradise where everybody who's a Buddhist wants to be reborn. And they are made of straw, and mud over a bamboo frame, and then there's a layer of cloth, and finally, the painting and gilding. When we acquired these, they were filthy. They had 500 years of dirt and grime on them, and it took a year to have them cleaned. Fortunately, we were able to have this done in Baltimore, 
but when they got to cleaning them, they discovered all the gilding underneath and all the wonderful details. So these really are a treasure and a treat to see. You can look at the animals, the dragons, all the textile patterns, all the different figures that are involved also. In the Chinese gallery, we also have a Chinese scholar's studio, which is a recreation of what a Chinese bureaucrat would have had in his home, his little private retreat. Today we have our Barca loungers with our uh, remotes and our televisions. Well, this is where the Chinese scholars and bureaucrats would have retired to in the evening or on holidays with their friends. They would have looked at paintings, they would have read poetry or written poetry, enjoyed a little wine and played a little music. And so you'll see some furniture and paintings and various and sundry things that they would have had in their studio as well. Now in our Korean gallery are some very, very beautiful ceramics. These date from the 3rd and 4th century on up through contemporary wares. We have the only gallery devoted for Korean art in the entire southern United States. And there are some incredibly beautiful paintings, some very, very impressive furniture, as well as some beautiful metalwork as well. One of my favorite pieces is a small little Buddha. He's about eight inches tall, and he is gilt bronze, and he is very, very rare. There are only three or four of this type of images known in the world, so you must be able to see that one, be sure to see that one. We then have a gallery devoted to Indian and Southeast Asian sculpture. This overlooks the park, and so this gallery is filled with wonderful sunlight, so the shadows play over the sculpture at different times during the day. Probably the most important piece of sculpture in that gallery is an Indian piece from the 12th century, and it's known as Ume Mahasvara. And this is a family picture of Lord Shiva, his wife Parvati, and their two children. You'll notice on this piece that the stone carving is just exceptional. It's incredibly deep and detailed. And these figures, luscious and sensuous as they are, they're imprisoned within all of this elaborate detail of the crowns and their jewelry and the architecture that surrounds them. And next to that gallery is the Gallery for Southeast Asian Ceramics. We have an amazing collection of Vietnamese and Thai material. Of particular interest for me is our Ban Chang collection. These are the Neolithic pots from northern Thailand. This culture was unknown until the 1960s when they had some Peace Corps workers working up in northeastern Thailand and one literally tripped and fell into a ditch by the side of the road and found broken pieces of pottery from this culture. Fortunately, he was an amateur archaeologist. He sent these pieces back to the United States to have them dated, and the dates came amazingly early, 1000 BC. And this culture not only made beautiful pottery, but they cast bronze, they worked in glass, really, really advanced. And so you can study the complete history of Thai ceramics at our museum. The Vietnamese ceramics are also very, very beautiful. Lovely blue and whites, and along with some Cambodian darkwares as well. The pot here is the oldest piece in the museum. It's Japanese, it's from the Jomon culture, and it dates to about 3000 BC. Now the Jomon people were one of the indigenous peoples for Japan, and they had a very beautiful pottery tradition, these incredible sculptural forms, almost Baroque, reaching out into space. This is an exceptionally fine piece. Oftentimes they're much smaller and not quite as elaborate. But this is large, the patterning on it is beautiful, and the um, decorations on the rim that project out are all intact. It really is exceptional. Jomon means cord pattern, and that refers to the patterning on the sides of the jar. If you look at it very carefully, you can see where they took a little piece of straw cord, straw rope, and rolled it over the wet clay to give the impressions on it. Join us next week as we continue to explore the world of the arts.